Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video. So as you can see, my images are already stamped. There's a reason why. The stamp set I'm using today is from My Favorite Things and it is called Snow Buddies. It's totally adorable. I got it several months ago. And then I went out to lunch with my girlfriend and I stamped this card um, with the intention of it being what I was going to color while we were chatting. She's a crafty friend. I stamped it in Copic Safe Ink, this Hero Arts Intensified Black, which I really do like. Um, anyway, so we got to chatting and then my allergies were acting up and we didn't end up being out to lunch together as long as we usually are, so I never colored it. But I still love the images, still wanted to put it into a card, so here we are. This is Eclipse Masking Paper and I'm just going to draw myself some hills so that I can create these snow hills in the background. I needed a pretty steep hill because I wanted my puppy dog to be like sliding down on his backside, um, kind of like sledding without a sled. Uh, and then I'm going to use this other piece here to create um, some hills in the foreground uh, just so it gives it a little bit more interest in the background. It's obviously a, um, a lot of white. So just trying to make it a little bit more interesting for the characters, uh, the scene to be. So I'm just going to trim these out, um, just along those pencil lines. They don't have to be perfect. We're just going for some general hill shapes here. And then uh, I will apply those to the card and do a bit of Distress Oxide in the background. You can use Distress Ink or any other inks that you have. I'm also going to mask my little characters here um, because I am going to be doing some inking right over top of them. So. Yeah, I just thought it would be a super cute card. It's really snowy here right now. Um, the weather is crazy. I think Mother Nature is wasted. She doesn't know whether or not she's coming or going because we had like a 60 degree day the other day in January. And then it was like ice storm, ice storm, three inches, four inches of snow. So here I'm doing, again, this is a little bit of a different color combination, more like a sunrise sunset color combination, but because I have all of that white, I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting with the sky um, so that the card wasn't boring. So I'm using squeezed lemonade, dried marigold, picked raspberry, and milled lavender. This milled lavender I used on another card um, within like the last month and honestly kind of fell in love with it. Um, the cover, like the sticker for it, and the traditional milled lavender Distress Ink is a little bit more dusty, but it's much brighter in the oxide and I'm totally digging it. So I'm doing the Distress um, blending the same way that I usually do. Um, I'm going over them, like slightly overlapping them, and then I'm going to go back through them as well. So I'll go from the yellow, orange, pink, purple, purple, pink, orange, yellow. I honestly don't remember if I left it in there in the editing or not because this is a very long video. Um, but there's lots of tips and trips, tips and trips, trips. Yep, that's it. I'm trying to trip you. No, I'm not. I'm trying to teach you things. That's totally different. Um, but anyway, so there's lots of them here, so hopefully you'll stick around for the whole video. Also is story time, which may not be your thing. If you're looking for how I created the snow, it's going to be at the end of the video. So if you're looking for the snow effect on the dog and on the card overall, um, the hills portion of it will be right here. And then the... Um, like the trick to getting him look like the snow's flying up will be at the end of the video in case that's just what you're looking for. So typically for my snow, I would go with a shaded lilac because it's more of a blue base purple. But since I'm really filling this in milled lavender, I thought I would try that and I really liked it. I'm going to be honest. Um, so here I am masking off um, the top I know it looks crazy and masking can sometimes be confusing. I'm adding shading to the back of the hill, which is going to create the hill in front because it's solid white. When you're doing shading for hills, you only want, like, well, for snow hills, you only want to add shading to the very um, tip top of your mask. You want the, the top of the hill to retain its whiteness. That's what's going to make it look like not dirty snow. We don't want dirty snow. And then I like to add a little bit in the front as well, just so it's not stark white. 
We're gonna hop into the coloring now. I chose Copics for my coloring. Um, that's just my preferred medium. You can use any colored pencils, alcohol markers, um, and anything you got going on that you would like to do this with. All of it will totally work with the technique that we're gonna use um, for the the snow kind of flying up around him, that, that creation of movement. So this is a very long video. Y'all know it is. Um, just something to note for this weekend. Um, I know Simon Says Stamp carries my favorite things. Um, I did not check to see if this one was in stock or not, but Simon Says Stamp has a site-wide sale going on um, for their birthday with 18% off. I will link that below if you would like to head over there. Um, it's everything in the store, so it's a pretty good deal if there's something that you've been waiting to get. Um, but you might want to move quickly. It's over on the 9th and I'm sure there's going to be a plethora of people who are going to try to get over there to get all of the things that they have been wanting because it's, you know, 18% off. It's not a bad deal. Um, so anyway, if they're, if it's not available there, it will be available over on the My Favorite Things website, which will also um, be linked below. Those links are affiliate links. Affiliate links just means that I get a small percentage at no additional cost to you, um, basically for sending you over um, to their stores. So anyway, let's talk story time. Story time today is, see we have this, this dog flying in the background. When Peanut saw my card, because I was about, um, I had gotten the background done and a little bit of the coloring, and then I had to stop because uh, I had other things going on. And then, so Peanut saw my card half done, and he was like, I want to make this card that you're making. So we restamped it and all that jazz so that he could make his own version of it. But when we were chatting, I said, Do you, um, you see the doggy in the background? And he said, Yeah, that doggy looks silly sliding down the hill. And I said, which one of our dogs do you think would do that? And he was like, Emma, which 100% he is correct. Um, so Emma, <laughs> Emma, Emma, Emma. I have had dogs my whole life. I actually, I can't even remember a point in my life where I didn't have a dog. Um, my parents had five dogs before they had, well, they had my oldest sister, but before they had me and my middle sister. So we've always been a dog family. I've always had dogs. Uh, we had one dog throughout that time, which I told you about, Pepper, who ate the bird and licked the guinea pig, um, into PTSD. But, um, that was the only dog that we ever had that was like, just crazy, could not train it. That is Emma. That is Emma, y'all. That is Emma. <laughs> I have never had such an obstinate dog. Um, so Emma is, what is she, almost nine months now? Um, and training is not going well. Now, I will take full responsibility for the fact that part of the reason training is not going well is because my schedule is not consistent and neither is Eric's. Um, we... Not that we don't spend time with her every day, we do, but it's always at different times of the day. One of us is coming and going all the time, um, working overtime, working other jobs. Um, so her, she doesn't have a, a consistent routine as far as time of day. Everything else is pretty consistent, but um, Emma is, <laughs> Emma is struggling. Um, so that's that. We'll, and then we'll get into how, what, just what Emma's doing. So Emma has a couple of different issues. One is that she doesn't want to listen. Um, she just doesn't. It does, she's a very food driven dog, very treat driven, but she still doesn't want to listen. So in all of this time, we've managed to teach her to sit and to wait when it comes to time to eat. Um, because she's just, you'd think we were starving her to death. We're not. But, like, when the food bowl comes out, she gets crazy. So I had to teach her to sit and wait um, until I put her food bowl down. Then I would tell her, go ahead. And then that's that's how she eats now. Um, but there are other things that she just won't, won't learn. Um, like, when to get off the couch. Um like get down she doesn't understand it jumping on people on things she doesn't want anything to do with it 
the potty training has been um, going fairly well. Uh, she hasn't really had any accidents in the house. She's learned to consistently hit the bell. So all of those things, um, the that part is good. The potty training part is good. But she still has to be crated because she still chews things that don't belong to her. Even when she has things that are hers, like she'll walk away from something she's chewing that is hers to get into something that is not. So about two weeks ago now... <laughs> Oh, Lord, Emma. You oh, And also, this story is a little bit gross. So just there's your warning. If, you're, if you don't want to hear um, gross things, you may have to move on with your life. Like, fast forward it or mute it. I won't be offended. Um, but it's funny, so I'm going to tell it anyway. Because sometimes the funny factor outweighs the gross factor. So anyway, um, we had eaten dinner and... It was me and Eric ate, ate dinner and then we're taking our dishes to the sink cleaning or, you know, clearing off the table. And the only thing that was left on the table was like the old school butter dish um, with a whole stick of butter in it. Now I had just opened the stick of butter. So there was only about, I don't know, maybe a half a tablespoon missing between both of us putting butter on biscuits. And so we were doing that. I had um, gone out into the garage Eric opened the door to uh, ask me a question um, while I was out in the garage. He shuts the door and then, I don't know, 10 seconds later opens the door again. And he was like, okay, we have a, we have a new problem. I said, what is the problem? And he said, can butter kill dogs? And I was like, I don't know. Let's Google it. So we Google it and it turns out that it's just super high in saturated fat. There isn't really any risk outside of, um, I believe, pancreatitis uh, and so I noted those things to watch for if that was going to be an issue um, and then pretty much everybody was just like there may be some vomiting there may be some diarrhea otherwise they should process it fine okay cool so I asked him what happened and basically when he opened the door to go back into the kitchen Emma was on the table all four paws on the table snarfing down this entire stick of butter just left alone with it for 15 seconds and she feels like she can just jump up on the table and eat the stick of butter and it's not like it was on the end of the table it was in the middle of the table so we're like great now like let's see how this plays out so for the rest of the night she was totally fine she never vomited um like never got sick none of that so then we go to bed the next morning at about, hmm, I think it was like 10 to 9, um, she's crying in her cage. So, like, I immediate thought, she, the diarrhea. I'm like, okay, I got to get her outside. So, I jump out of bed, run over to her cage, let her out. We go downstairs. She goes out. The dogs, both of them, her and Molly, go outside to go potty. Now, let me paint you a picture here, okay? I sleep in a t-shirt and my underwear. That's what I sleep in. Okay. So it has snowed. It is cold. I live in Cleveland and I let the dogs out to go to the bathroom. I'm standing in the house waiting for them to get done doing their business. Here's where we get kind of gross. So they're out there and Molly is, is doing her thing. Molly's taking care of number two, right? And Emma comes running across the lawn and like puts her face right up next to Molly's behind. And I'm like, what is this dog doing? And then, <laughs> oh my gosh, like she, like she is the waffle cone and Molly is soft serve ice cream. Like she is trying to catch it. I'm not even kidding you. I am so horrified by what I am seeing that this dog is out there trying to eat poop. <laughs> I open the slider, I'm out on the deck, and I am yelling at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning, Emma, no, Emma, stop it, Emma, stop, no, in no bottoms and a t-shirt. My neighbors probably thought I was a psychopath. I don't even know if they could see me, but in my mind's eye, looking back on it now, I'm sure it was probably fairly comical. So now, I am t I'm just totally revolted by 
her all together. I'm like, I cannot believe, like, and I don't even know how long it's been going on. Because she did not, when I lived at the old house at Kelly's Critter Cottage, I took her out on a leash. I took Molly out on a leash. I didn't have a fenced in yard. So none of that was going on. Like, I never saw her trying to eat poop or be over there trying to get it any poop. <laughs> I have a six-year-old and he says poop all the time and now I just feel like he would love this video because I just keep saying poop. But anyway, so I never saw her do that. Well, then when we moved to the new house and had a fenced-in yard, I'm not out there watching what they're doing 24-7. So I feel like this is a relatively new thing that has happened in our life that she's out there just snacking on poo. Um... <laughs> But, so now I'm like, don't lick me. Don't put your face by my face. <laughs> don't. None of it. None of it. So, I thought, okay, well, let's see if it's, like, a continued problem. Um, so, now I'm, tr I'm trying to pay better attention when I let them out. So, the next day, um, I get up. Or get, I'm getting ready for work. I let the dogs out. Emma's on one end of the yard. Molly's on another end of the yard. And Molly, again, it's taking care of business. And here comes Emma sprinting like she is fearful she's going to miss her mid-morning snack. So apparently this is a thing that has been occurring quite a bit. Um, and I really don't know how to break her of it. I, I don't know how to get her to stop eating poop outside of putting them back on leashes and going out there with them every time. But then I'm just going to put myself in a situation where I have a fenced in yard, but I'm perpetually putting my dogs on leashes to take them outside. Like there's got to be another way. So Eric and I talk about it. In addition to the, the, the poop eating, she does not listen and she is a spiteful peer. So if Emma doesn't feel like Emma is getting enough attention, um, and obviously, like, there's a lot going on. Not that we don't spend time with her or pay attention to her. We obviously do. But, like, Emma's not the son of the solar system, right? Okay. So if she doesn't feel like she's getting enough attention, she will pee in the house as kind of like a, well, now you have to pay attention to me. Um, so one of the times she had gone out and she had gone out. It was a pretty nice day. So she had gone out like two or three times in a half an hour. Like she had been going in and out while we were downstairs cleaning up some things. Well, then I came upstairs to the craft room. Eric went down to the basement to pay some bills. And then Emma comes into the room. I'm doing my things and I'm like, go lay down. And then the next thing I know, she is peeing in my hallway right outside the door. Now, like I said, she had just gone out like three times in a half an hour. It had only been, she'd only been back in the house for maybe 10, 15 minutes. So there's no way she couldn't, like it wasn't a situation where she couldn't hold it. And like the spot was not even that big. Like usually if they can't hold it, it's quite a bit of pee. Uh, that was not the situation. It was definitely a spite peeing. And then last night, um, Peanut got sick. He got strep throat. That's a whole different day, story, time. Don't you worry. That'll be coming down the pike. Um, but once he started feeling better and he was on the antibiotics, I obviously need to strip all of the beds, spray everything with Lysol, do all the laundry. You know how it rolls. Um, and so I was in the process of doing that. I had already taken off all the sheets from his bed, from our bed. Um, and then got them downstairs in the washer and I was remaking the beds. So I got Peanut's bed done. I was in, um, the, mine and Eric's bedroom and Emma comes in there. She's walking around. She's sniffing things. She's over by her crate, whatever. Um, and then she just turns around and starts peeing on our comforter that is on the floor. Uh, and again, this is not a situation where she has not been outside recently. It's just we're not paying enough attention to her and she's going to show us by peeing in the floor. Um, I don't want, I guess, it, it creates a lot of issues. 
um, because we do have a lot going on. Everybody has a lot going on. Um, not just in our household, but just every, you guys have a lot going on. And so when you add in a dog that just won't listen, she just won't listen. It makes everything super stressful. Um, and it, it's just, we're kind of at our wit's end with it after nine months of, you know, and yes, she's still a puppy. I'm very much aware of that. But I got Molly at four months. By nine months, we were over this. Molly had no, we had no issues. Once she got through the, like, the chewing stage, um, we were pretty much golden. Uh, so, and uh, again, uh, other dogs that I had in my house, outside of Pepper, when I was growing up, all very good, very well-behaved um, dogs. Emma, not so much. So, one of the guys we work with, he has a German Shepherd, um, and so he had taken him to a training. Here's the struggle with the training. Most trainings are, um, like, you go for an hour every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I don't, and neither does Eric, have every, any day at, at 6 or 8 or noon available. Our schedules change all the time. I rotate from afternoon shift and day shift. Um, he has a bunch of side jobs that he works in addition to his regular shift. So we just don't have the same time available every day of the week. We just don't. Um, so w this officer that we know took his to a board and train. So basically they take the dog for... Um, a week to a week and a half depending and break them of their bad habits teach them new good habits and then teach you how to keep those habits at home um i trained molly myself and i like i said i we didn't have any issues but i had i did have a lot more time to spend with her i'm very conscientious of that i did not have a young child at the time i also did not have four jobs um so we've decided that this is probably the best way to go about this. It is a much more expensive um, than your traditional training, but we feel like it's worth it to avoid the stresses and the getting aggravated, getting frustrated with Emma for, for not listening. Um, so they're supposed to come out next weekend and meet her, kind of gauge her personality so that they can come up with a game plan um, for her to train her. Um, which I am, even though it's going to cost us like a unicorn and the blood of our first child, um, I am so looking forward to it because I'm really tired of being frustrated with her uh, pretty consistently. So, and I did mention to them about the eating of the poo and they seem to think that they have a way that they can take care of that, which will make me so happy. Well, another guy I work with, his one of his dogs, he had four, one of them was a, was a poo snacker and um, he was never able to break that dog of the, of the snacking of the poo. So here's hoping. Um, okay, so back to the card. Uh, here, because I used the milled lavender for my shadows, I picked some lighter purples that are a little bit dustier. Uh, so the V90 family to add my shadows in the snow. I added shadows underneath my girl, underneath my snowman, and then um, underneath the dog. I did do some flicking where the, sh the shadows are coming off from the dog as if he was sliding down. And then you can see I also added some footprints because nobody has ever made a snowman without having to walk around the snowman and leave footprints. Okay? We're not, I mean, unless you're like a magical fairy, which is also probably a pretty adorable card. But I'm not a magical fairy in real life, and so I leave footprints, and so does this girl. So um, I added a little bit of shading to that with a V93. And then I'm going to go around just the edges with my colorless blender. Um, and then any, you probably saw before, I was going around any areas where I may have gotten out of the lines with my uh, Copic markers. And so I'm just going around the very edges of this to kind of blend them in. I am, here's one way with the, with the, the snow. So the white gel pen. I'm going to add some details to um, his little scarf, her little sweater, um, some highlights on top of her hat. But in order to make her hat a little bit fluffier, um, I am going to go over her, like right over the black lines as well, outside of the black lines and on top of the fluff ball with a series of white dots. 
this is going to give the appearance of snow collecting on top of it as well as it being a much fuzzier um, little pom-pom than just with the solid black outline. So that's definitely something that you can do. Um, and you could do this with other things as well, like just any kind of pom-poms um, to kind of break up that black line. It'll make it look poofier. I'm going to outline all of my images because I like a bold black outline. That's just me. That's no different. But for the dog, I'm only going to outline his head and uh, the top of his scarf, the top of his hands. The rest of it I want to, I, I'm not trying to make it look any bolder. I'm using a stiff bristled brush and this is just straight white acrylic paint. Um, I didn't thin it out at all. I'm just going in there and so I dip it into the paint, kind of dab it off on my acrylic block and then go in and I went right over where um, I like the, where I want the snow to be, where it will be coming up over his feet, over his tail, over his tushy. Uh, I am going to thin it out and add a little bit of water so that I can flick some paint all over the background of the card, including on top of my girl and my snowman, as if snow was falling down on top of them. And you can add as much or as little as you would like. You could make this thing a full-blown blizzard if you want. I only added a medium amount. And this does give your cardstock some texture, which is nice, um, you know, to add that little bit of interest, even though it's a one-layer card. And you can kind of toy around with, um, you know, how much snow you want to be kicked up around him. I have seen, it was Sandy Allnock. She did the same thing. Um, but she stamped the bottom half of her stamp in a lighter, like a light gray, um, a no line ink so that it blended in um, much better. That's also an option if you want less of it to show. I used some clear glitter um, from this pen on top of the snow on top of my um, snow that's kicking up over him. And then I'm also going to add just a few dots of stardust stickles so that it would be nice and sparkly like as if the light was catching um, the snow as it was kicking up. I'm going to wait for this to completely dry. Acrylic paint does dry relatively quickly so you're not going to have to wait hours but you do want to make sure that it is completely dry. I'm going to stamp on my sentiment um, and I'm going to use the Hero Art just regular black um, ink, dye ink, to stamp that. And then that's pretty much going to be the whole card. So um, wish me luck with the, the, the pet training. I hope these people can help us because I have no idea how to stop her from doing the things that she's doing. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.